Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and today I have a super, super special build for you. It is Halloween themed in honor of Halloween coming up. If you're watching this and it's not Halloween, kudos to you for watching a Beetle House, Beetlejuice House speed build in whatever month it currently is for you. <laughs> I've been waiting to share this one with you for a little bit. It took a while to get it just right. There's not too many reference pictures of the house. I'll throw up one right now so that you're able to see it, but it took a while to get it perfect. It really did. And I made sure the interior was also inspired by Beetlejuice, which was really cool. I haven't watched the movie in a really long time, but I was Beetlejuice for Halloween a few years ago, I think like two years ago now. Green hair, pinstripe suit, all that. I didn't really wear a suit, I wore a pinstripe jacket. It was really cool though, I promise. <laughs> but I haven't seen the movie in a pretty long time actually, and I was just inspired to build this wacky house. That's the only way I can think to describe it. It's odd. It's up on this really big foundation. The main porch of the house doesn't have railing. There's also a version of the house after the family that moved into it renovated it with all these super quirky, like ultra modern details. It's really cool, but I don't think I would be able to recreate it as accurately as I would like to in The Sims 4, so I stuck with the more classic picture of the house, and I nailed it. Like, I'm not even, I can't even humble brag. I'm so proud of how this build turned out. I worked on getting the proportions for the clock tower right, getting the window placement right so that it has the same kind of effect, because not everything translates in The Sims as it would in real life, so you definitely have to work at it to make sure it's exactly what you want. And there's also not good pictures of every angle of the house. So part of it just didn't make sense to me for the longest time. And I was scrolling through models that people had made of the house and little diagrams and all of these different reference sources to just try and get the exterior as perfect as possible. The inside of the house, which you'll see, honestly, I spent so long uh, messing around with the roof to make sure that it was perfect because that like long skinny room on the second floor was just messing me up. I had no idea where it was, how wide it was. I couldn't figure it out and I messed with it a lot off camera to make sure that it was just right and it makes perfect sense in the house it looks great it turns into the primary suites ensuite bathroom and walk-in closet so it's actually a really functional space for being a more narrow kind of obscure shape but yeah this house this one's really special I'm almost going to move on to the inside pretty soon. I still have a little bit of landscaping to do. There is a garage in that foundation, which I was able to recreate perfectly. Very, very pleased with how that turned out. It's always hit or miss, I think, whether a garage works. And then on top of the added challenge of having it be built into the foundation of the house had to play around a little more than normal to make sure that it looked right and it did it did so you can recreate your beetlejuice dreams perfectly in the house the interior does not match up with the movie but i was heavily inspired by the all gray color palette so i tried to make that the same i kept the landscaping on the exterior also pretty similar to the actual house. I built the house in Glimmerbrook, I believe, the world that came with Realm of Magic. This lot has really good lighting. It's a little bit of a pain to play with because it's surrounded by mountains and or like big rocks and it makes it 
challenging because the camera kind of jumps sometimes so i try to keep it as still as possible if you see some of those random jumps i'm so sorry i hope it's not too distracting we're already on the inside now and i'll tell you just a little bit more about the house so it has three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms you can already see i had imagined it for a wealthy gothic family there is a three-story office tower that's what that room turns into and it's really cool it has just the most amazing super tall ceilings that you've ever seen and i couldn't think of anything better i would have put like a ladder or like a spiral staircase or something and made it more functional in terms of like the levels of it but it just wasn't working how i wanted it to especially with the windows and the door placement so i figured it would be better to use that space as this super over-the-top office room instead of splitting up into different floors with kind of awkward window placements because they don't always like line up nicely. That was one thing that was really weird because the windows on that space are funky in real life. So I had to make do and try and make it work. And I don't think you can tell on the inside or the outside. So I'm gonna say job well done there. <laughs> I'm just patting myself on the back like way too much for this, but I hope you're as obsessed with this build as I am. It's always fun to recreate ones from real life because I think it's more challenging. When you're able to just make something up, there is no right or wrong. And you know, when you're recreating something, there doesn't have to be a right or wrong either. And you can be inspired by it because proportions are off. You don't have the same objects. So you gotta work with what you have, but I love to make it as realistic as possible. So that was something I definitely went for. I was surprised at how challenging it was to find really nice, unique wallpapers for the house and floors that were the right shade of black and gray to match with everything. And I know that that's a very common uh, critique and challenge with The Sims 4 is matching all the swatches I don't mind, you know? <laughs> There's so many other things happening that I don't really have a bone to pick with all the swatches not matching. It would be great, but I can make do it. Sometimes encourages me to try some new objects. Here's a massive kitchen, massive, especially for the house having three bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. Most of the house is kitchen, I think. Don't quote me on that, but it's a giant kitchen. If you're including the prep kitchen and the wine cellar room, it is definitely the biggest uh, use of space in the whole house. Why did I include a prep kitchen? I just felt like it. I thought it would be a really, really cool fit. And I've already kind of distracted from telling you about the build. So you can find it. Oh my god, I didn't even tell you where you can find it. <laughs> It's on the Sims 4 gallery under my user ID, at Game. You can find the gallery link directly in the description. There's also a link to the tray files if you prefer to download it that way. I don't use any custom content, but I use a lot of packs. So if you don't have all the packs, the game's just going to replace it with things that you do have or might remove the item entirely if it's something that there is no good substitute for. But you don't need to have all the packs that I do. Download it, add what you do have, redecorate it, change anything about it. I would love to see all the different ways that you could use this house in this floor plan because I think it's really, really cool. <laughs> I do. I love this house. Um, it costs 179,000 simoleons, so it's an expensive one, but you know, you can cheat. Mother load or free real estate, whatever works. <laughs> This is the office that I was talking about. I decorated the bathrooms and the hallways off camera because it just takes a while and it's a lot of moving the camera because it's a smaller space, but you can see everything in the screenshots at the end and you're not going to want to miss it because the screenshots of this house just, they sell it. I painted all of the ceilings to make sure that they matched really well with the darkness of everything because we got that update pretty recently where we could paint ceilings and they're no longer white 
can't do that under the roofs, which, you know, again, I would love to have infinite building capabilities in The Sims 4, but it's not likely. So I'm grateful for what I have and I do the most with it that I can. This is a nursery. Honestly, I don't know. I should have Googled this, but I don't know how many people are in the family that moved into the house or their ages. I know Winona Ryder was in it and she was younger. So maybe three bedrooms is perfect, but in any case, there's a nursery black and gray, of course, with some pops of color. You know, I don't think you can ever really get around having color in The Sims 4 because of the swatch restrictions, unless you were going really minimalist, but this is not a minimalist house by any means. So there's some pops of color, there's cool plants, there's great artwork. This is what I imagined would be a teenager's bedroom or a guest suite because it has this really cool entry room that's like a dressing area you know the house is a weird shape i had to stretch what i normally would do and this right here is the primary suite this is the last room in the speed build and then we're gonna move on to some screenshots so I thank you so so much for watching this video for 300 subscribers don't forget to like some ah, like subscribe and comment if you enjoyed this it lets me know to keep going and that you're loving it I love making these it's a great stress reliever and it's really cool to see what I'm able to create in the game so hope you enjoy some screenshots Happy Halloween, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!